Cubie. And I'm Cubette. Welcome to our cooking club, where kids learn to cook. It's tasty. Made easy. You can't use our regular silverware to measure that salt. You'll end up with way too much. You need to use an actual measuring spoon, not what we eat with. Sarah, I got it. Let me try it again. Can you imagine what this would taste like with too much salt? Ew, gross. Make sure to level off the top of the measuring spoon with a knife. Then we'll have just the right amount. I'm a teaspoon. Three of me equals one of him. I'm a tablespoon. One of me equals three of her. And I'm really divided about it all. You can see right through me. Make sure you use the spoon and sweep method so you don't get too much packed in. I use a spoon to scoop out the flour and lightly drop it into the measuring cup. That's what it says in the recipe book. Then use a knife to level off the top, right? Right. Good job. Would I do the same with powdered sugar? You bet. But for ingredients like brown sugar, margarine, butter, or shortening, you will want to pack them into the measuring cup and push down until the cup is full. All it takes is a little practice. And a little patience. And you'll have what it takes to measure up right every time. The measuring cup for liquids like milk and water is clear and has a spout, so we won't spill when pouring. Be sure to place the measuring cup on a level surface. Then bend down to read the measurements. That's how to make sure you get exactly the right amount. Wow, you sure are being bossy about this. Well, I have to be. When it comes to baking, the right measurements can make a big difference between hard, dry, salty cake and a yummy one. Okay, okay, I get it. I'll take the yummy one. How easy was that? Super easy. For more tips like these, visit imperialsugar.com or dixiecrystals.com. And thanks for watching.